Yurtz and Devor. From 1996 to 1997, I served as a Fulbright Scholar in Journalism and Mass Communication in the Central Asian Republic of Kyrgyzstan. My wife, Stephanie, gamely came along too. Most Soviet-era apartment blocks were built around a devoir, a courtyard. This patch of land, dusty in summer, snow-covered in winter, muddy in spring, is a public space, a commons for apartment dwellers. In most complexes, apartment entrances are on the devoir, not the street side. You enter the devoir through a tunnel or driveway from the street. When you give directions, especially to a large block, it's not enough to provide the dom, the house, and the kvartira, apartment number, because there may be half a dozen separate entrances, each with a staircase and, if you're lucky, a working elevator. Unless you know the block, you'll try a couple of entrances before figuring out which one leads to the apartment. The layout of apartment complexes means that all traffic, people, vehicles, stray animals, passes through the devoir. There are swings and slides for the children and benches under the trees where, on warm days, neighbours sit and chat. Residents cross the devoir to take garbage to the communal dumpsters. Although there's sometimes litter, many residents take pride in keeping the devoir clean, sweeping the area outside their entrance. Often there's a small grocery or convenience store sometimes a hairdresser or shoe repair shop. In our devoir in Bishkek, we knew it was time to get out of bed when we heard the call of the dairyman who sold milk, cream and eggs from the trunk of his larder. We went down with our bunky, large glass jars, joining the short line of neighbours and children. In the depths of winter, it was a relief to put your coat on over your pyjamas and spend a few minutes in the cold rather than hiking through the snow to the market or to the store. Like everyone else, Stephanie and I used the balcony on the Devore side to hang out our washing. The climate of the region is continental, with no rain most days in summer, fall and early winter. Clothes hung out in the evening are dry by the next morning. One morning in late December 1996, as we took down laundry, we noticed a group of men assembling two yurts in the Dvor. The traditional Kyrgyz nomadic dwelling is a round, tent-like structure, about 15 feet across. Sheepskins or canvas are stretched over a wooden frame, and the floors and walls are covered with sherdaks, brightly covered felt rugs. Then the group began chopping wood and building a fire. On our way out to the university, we passed a horse tethered to the fence. When we returned, the carcass was roasting on the spit. We thought it was too early for a New Year celebration, so Stephanie asked Dinura, a young neighbour girl who was watching, what they were celebrating. Her face fell and she started crying. My grandfather died, she sobbed. The whole extended family had come to Bishkek to mourn and to bury the patriarch. By tradition, the women of the family sit with the body inside the yurt and wail, while the men sit outside and talk about the life of the deceased. The whole affair lasts a couple of days, and then they bury the body. It's easy to see how this tradition evolved when the Kyrgyz were nomads, moving from winter to summer pastures with their flocks of sheep and horses, and living in yurts year-round but it was now transposed to an urban setting. The ceremony took place just off a busy main street near shops, markets and government ministries. It was another sign that although about one third of Kyrgyzstan's population lived in cities and towns, in some way they hadn't moved far from their rural roots. The mourners likely informed the police of their plans in advance, but awake with open fires and slaughtered horses in the middle of the capital city seemed a normal occurrence. No one was going to tell a Kyrgyz where he could pitch his yurt. <laughs>